Welcome to Grover Load. I'm Anthony, and here is an update on the Framework laptop, the AMD Ryzen 7040 series. And uh, I got this email because I think I'm in the first batch. If I recall, I bought my wife one. You know, <laughs> I got I got the 12th gen. I'm stuck with that for right now. But I bought my wife the uh, AMD 7040 because I want to try it out, and I think it'd be a good review as well to compare the two. I like to probably compare it to the 13th gen. What's really cool about these framework laptops is that if you were to get them side by side, now you have an AMD model and a um, Intel model, and you can basically test them side by side in the same chassis and see how they operate. So. The, and, and see how they compare, which is which is pretty cool. Um, and so let's jump over, and you can see what is happening with the framework laptop here. Uh, this is the email I got, and uh, you know I think you've seen maybe seen this on forms already. It's that there is a delay, and so shipping they're updating the shipping timing. To me, this isn't a huge deal. Um, you know, this is a new, pretty new processor that AMD is getting out. It seemed like that they've had some delays or issues with it already this year. And I would rather have a laptop that gets out that has everything kind of ironed out than one that than one that doesn't. And um, this is due to electric ish issue they recently found on the validation with late firmware deliveries from silicon vendors we had to delay the start of mass production of the F framework laptop 13 7040 series until september so we'll be shipping as many pre-orders we can before the end of september but we anticipate that orders originally in q3 batches will need to be moved into q4 and we've prepared to substantial production capacity so we don't expect the late start to cascade into other delays in later batches so I don't, and from what they tell me, from how they kind of ship the other ones, I don't anticipate that they're going to be, have a huge issue later on. I think that they're, you know, they're delayed at the beginning, but they're going to have enough ramp up and enough extras to catch up to be able to complete orders as they come up in later batches. So that's just something to keep in mind here. And, you know, they, it is disappointing if you want to go and cancel it. Uh, and go for a refund. They have a knowledge base article that you can do that if you if you happen to miss their email uh, this but uh, they also said the laptop 13 is in stock uh, and it ships within five days so from inventory so that's really quick really good turnaround there as well and you just gotta keep keep in mind that this is one of those that they've been working on and trying to they, they've already done Intel so they've had a system for the Intel side of things. AMD with the 7040 is a little bit different, a little bit, you know, longer uh, time to get up and I'm sure that they wanted this on. So details on this are actually pretty interesting, at least to me, maybe not to everybody else, but to me it is interesting, which is, you know, they, they are, um, th this is a new product and they often prefer design around mature silicon. Now, there comes a time where you actually have to start designing, and I think frameworks get into that, where they have to start designing around non-mature silicon. So silicon is just coming out so that you can compete in a market that everyone's kind of going towards of the newest and the best so that you have the latest um, silicon on your boards, right? So there's there's that side of thing, and that um, that is one of it. And so... Over the last year, caused other brands to cancel many of their products, resulting in the monks to be the first to ship the 7040 series U-class processors, AMD RZ616 Wi-Fi module, and the Infineon CCG8 USB PD controller. So, all combined, you're getting all three of those. So, it's pretty nice that Framework is doing this, laying it out, and I think a lot of people are getting a framework design AMD chip, one or other, or looking towards those because it is one of the you know first ones to have that 7040 series if they're looking for that AMD uh, chip in there and not the Intel 13th gen. So both the AMD and Infineon hardware coming in hot, as they put it, and the first proper feature complete release of both these just arrived this week. So they just got them in. Both companies have helped us a long way, creating special early point releases of 
for our development and these final releases are necessary resolving launch blocking bugs and complete testing so good news on this. so when they're explaining this one thing i'm going through is a is amd communicating is infineon communicating who is the hold up here and it just seems to be as the development has come to a close everyone's working together trying to make sure that this comes out and it gets to be a good release and bugs happen and i'm in software development i get that um you sometimes have some hard meetings at some points you know do we try to work around this in software do we not what do we need to do you know do we just do another hot fix on this it's hard worse you can't do that but in software that's one of the things you will consider um and you you have to make sometimes a tough decision of hey let's get this right on this release and if we need to cut one even after that um in, in the software instance we'll do that but hopefully we can elongate the point release somewhere down the line rather than turn having a quick turnaround because you don't to me, you don't want to have a quick turnaround. You'd rather have something out that's a little bit more stable and that shows that you're kind of committed to that because I think that, to me, it leads a little seed of doubt if you release something that needs a hot fix right away. And I think this was a better thing. And that's my stance. You know, I like to see a little bit more uh, testing and a little bit more stability out of product than I do not. And we could probably go into framework uh, 12th gen firmware if you want to talk about that. <laughs> um, so with the firmware stability coming late, our electrical validation was also delayed. You know, makes sense, right? This is AMD and everybody, Infineon, along with Framework, are probably all getting their stuff set up, but at least they're getting that done. So, and they locked their main board design. They had already locked it, but we've made late board revisions to fix the issues, pushing the factory rank up schedule back, right, um, as updated PCBs arrive. The specific issue we found resolved around power circumstance and standby on the memory rails. So everyone out there that complains about battery life <laughs> and power consumption on standby will be grateful that this is fixed. Insufficient power supply designs on the US uh, B4 retimers and a bug in the SSD circuit could also cause drive instability. I'm glad that they all fixed that. AMD has tended to have team members uh, worked with us on design and validation. They've also been fantastic partners ensuring the product and robust and high performance with the engineers and our amazing framework engineers on the job. Uh, and With their engineers and our en amazing framework engineers, we're confident the product will ship will, is solid. And I, I fully believe that. I mean, I have their 12th gen, works quite well and it's been very solid for me. I've had no issues besides them and their firmware updates uh, for the BIOS. <laughs> Especially when you have CVE issues. Come on, guys, That's, those should be there. But now here's what we have to get into, I think is a very crucial. Now, Intel has had Thunderbolt for a very long time, so their kind of designs are much different. AMD now is starting to integrate USB 4, which is Thunderbolt, what, 3, I think? Um, basically Thunderbolt 3, but in the open standard of USB rather than a uh, Intel, you know, check spec that you have to get validation from Intel. So the Framework 14, or th Framework 13 AMD, right, has compatibility parameters that everyone needs to be keep in mind for optimal battery life. The two backside uh, slots support USB 4 and display output through can do's retimers. Uh, I hope I pronounced that properly to ensure proper signal integrity. The front right slot is a USB 3.2 along with display output through an analog X retimer. The front slot is USB 3 with no 3.2 with no display output. So just keep that in mind as you're going through. We recently learned that uh, Kano retimers don't enter suspended state and an empty USB-A expansion card with USB 2.0 device plugged in resulting in high power draw. This also occurs with HDMI Gen 3 and DisplayPort's Gen 2 expansion cards, but we're currently working through a firmware update to fix this. So hopefully those expansion cards will be fixed and will be working and how i kind of operate even on my laptops the back two are usually my hdmi my um display ports my usb c's the you know the powering everything else now the front 
the front right, on, even on mine right now, is HDMI, so that would be okay. That would be within their guidance. And then happens to be the left front one is always my USB device, usually a mouse. So it kind of works. And But they're developing a tool to check your expansion card configuration. I think that this is a great idea. I think they've actually should have had this out um, as they do different gens of these uh, uh, cards. I think maybe eventually it can even tell you what gen you have because there are people like me that may have multiple types of gens. So you get through and they'll, they'll be able to check to make sure you're optimal for this. And then one thing I want to get into and touch and a framework touches it here, but I really need to do a dedicated video on this and complain about Microsoft because uh, I think it's good for the consumer space. I want to be positive about it as much as I can, but come on Microsoft. Windows installation problems has been an absolute... Uh, we'll use their words, less than friendly to both consumers and hardware makers with every release. Let's put it that way, because I got some other choice words for Microsoft on it. Um, <laughs> Microsoft now requires network access and logging in to a Microsoft account during installation. I did do a video about that as well, if you want to get around that. And I may have another video coming out. I need to try to see if there's another way around it. <laughs> um, so I, I haven't got that done yet. Uh, maybe maybe this week we'll see uh, we'll see what's going on on my schedule but I got a couple videos on the docket today record and then um, we'll see where I'm at but because of this right Microsoft's they're no longer prioritizing including up-to-date Wi-Fi drivers yeah Microsoft this is the ingeniousness of Microsoft <laughs> we need you to have network access while logging in but the Wi-Fi drivers that we that you need aren't going to be on there. Thanks, Microsoft. Yeah, you're really you're really putting two apples together and rubbing them. Well, huh? Yeah, jeez. So um, the current Windows installer available for Microsoft doesn't have the new RZ616 Wi-Fi card that comes with the framework laptops, resulting in a block installation. Luckily, there's a couple of workarounds. The first one's pretty convoluted. My, you know publishes a manual Wi-Fi driver. Another one is Rufus, which lets you create the Windows installer and bypass the network requirement. The third one, which they didn't put here, is check out my video <laughs> uh, a little bit earlier that I've done and be able to um, work around and create a local account as well. And we'll publish and uh, they're going to publish and share what we determined is the most reliable and convenient method step-by-step -step installation guide before we start shipping. So I think uh, actually my little bit uh, is my guide is going to be pretty simple for most people. You just uh, you know start it up, you do that command that I had in there, and you're off to the races. So just keep that in mind, or you reboot and then you're off to the races. Uh, I will try another one, and if I can if I can verify that this works on a new OS, and I think I got I got to get I think I have a computer I can install Windows 11 on or redo an installation, so I might be able to do it. Linux, if you're doing Linux, it is all good to go. So that is the little little bit of the update here I wanted to do um, for this, and hopefully you all that are have the framework laptop, you get, you know, as long as it's in the time frame. I know a lot of you are going to be, oh, you know, this is disappointing, but at the same time you pre-ordered it if you're in an early batch way a long time ago, so waiting a little bit longer, like I, I was thinking, is not a huge deal, right? I, <laughs> I was like, I ordered it a long time ago, there's no need to cancel, <laughs> I'm still waiting for it, right, um, one way or another, but if you did need to cancel, they have the framework uh, Intel 13, and just pick up that if that's something you're interested in, unless you were hard, uh, you're, you're hard set on getting that AMD laptop, then I think that there might be some others out there right now, but that is up to you to choose. But that's what I wanted to talk about today a little bit here. Um, this is quite interesting, everything they're going through. They give you a little inside baseball of behind the scenes of what's going on. Now, as they are for repairability and everything else, this is a good insight to have. It kind of shows I am backing up the repairability. This is what we had. We ran into an issue. We not only wanted to make sure that this is right, but we want to have the best experience for the users. And since we are for right to repair, it's sometimes good to say, hey, we don't get everything right in the first time. We needed to fix something so that it's a better experience for you. 
and it just kind of shows, you know, even through all of us, you know, maybe we're going to give a little bit more information than everybody else to show that we're committed to the consumer, and that's what I like to see. So with that, I want to say thank you so much for supporting Gray Overload and helping this channel grow. I really do appreciate it, and until next time, make sure you do all the fun stuff, like, subscribe, share the video. It really does help out the channel. Until next time, God bless.